Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elizabeth if you're new here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet for absolute beginners. If you've always wanted to crochet but just can't get the hang of it, if you've never held a crochet hook in your life or you don't even really know the difference between crochet and knitting, this is the video for you. I'm going to be showing you the supplies you'll need, how to hold your hook and yarn, how to make a slip knot, how to chain, and how to make a single crochet. And if you have no idea what any of the words I just said mean, it's fine, that's why we're here. I learned how to crochet in February of 2021. Oh wait, it's 2022, isn't it? I learned how to crochet in February of 2022, and I taught myself by watching YouTube videos. And I know that's how a lot of people learn. I wanted to make this series to explain the basics and fundamentals of crochet in a very clear and simple way. During each part of this series, I will be progressively teaching you new skills. For example, part two is going to be about double crochet, half double crochet, and treble crochet, which is kind of building off of single crochet, which we're learning today. I believe that everyone can learn how to crochet, no matter your skill level coming into it. So you don't need many supplies for this. The hook size that I'm using is US 19, or the measurement that I usually use is the millimeters of the hook. This is a 5.5 millimeter hook. You can buy these on Amazon, at a craft store, on Etsy. If you just Google crochet hook, usually they'll come in a set with a bunch of different sizes, but feel free to get a single one to start out. I'm going to be using this weight four yarn. Yarn weights usually range from weight one up to weight seven, from super fine all the way through medium and then chunky or bulky and then super chunky or super bulky. Weight four is considered a medium weight yarn, which is really good for learning because the stitches won't be too small. I've also heard it referred to as worsted weight. So if you're buying yarn on the label, look for either weight four, medium weight or worsted weight yarn. The material doesn't matter too much while we're learning. This is just acrylic yarn, which I recommend if you're starting out because it's pretty affordable. I wouldn't buy anything wool or a nicer material that would be more expensive. Another thing that you're gonna need are stitch markers and they come in different shapes and sizes too so they don't have to look exactly like this. These are super helpful when you're a beginner because sometimes it's hard to remember where certain stitches are. So we'll be marking stitches with these so that we know maybe where the first stitch was or where the last stitch of the row was. And then the last thing, a little needle. And this is not a sewing needle, this is made of plastic, it's flexible. I'll link all of these supplies in the description so that you can see them better, but this will help us weave in our ends at the end of our project so that there's no loose tails. Before we start learning, I just wanna mention quickly, if you're not super familiar with crochet, it is different from knitting. For knitting, you're using two pointed needles to kind of loop the yarn around together versus crochet, there's just one hook. And that one hook and one hand is doing most of the work while our other hand is holding the yarn. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing is showing you how to make a slip knot. And basically what that's doing is creating a little loop for our hook to be inserted so that we can start making stitches and the yarn doesn't just slip right off the hook. The majority of crochet projects you start will begin with this. To make a slip knot, I'm taking my tail, which is the end of my yarn, and my working yarn, which is the yarn that's connected to my big ball over here. And I'm going to place my finger to hold the tail in place, and with my other hand, I'm going to make a loop. Now I'm going to pull this working yarn through this loop. So I'm going to pick up my loop, place it over the working yarn, and pull that through. Now I'm going to take the working yarn and the tail, grab them together, and just pull tightly to create a knot. Now we have a little knot here with a full loop. And this loop needs to be small enough to fit around our hook, which isn't really that big. So I'm going to pull this tail and the working yarn ends to make the loop smaller. And there we have a slip knot. You can also insert your hook into that loop from right to left, like so and just pull those two ends to tighten the loop around your hook. And it should look like this. So now that we have our slip knot, I have this tail here, I have the loop around my hook, and then I have the working yarn that's connected to my ball of yarn. And before I show you how to chain, I just wanna show you quickly how to hold the hook and the yarn. So to hold my hook and my yarn, I'm gonna be holding the hook in my right hand on the bottom of the hook, my hook has a handle, but if yours doesn't have a handle, a way you can gauge where to hold it is just wherever this little bump ends, this bottom half. Then my yarn, I always keep to the left of me, just because that's where it's pulling from. 
and I'm holding it with my left hand. As you're working stitches, your yarn needs to have tension. And tension is essentially how tight or loose your yarn is while you're working. So instead of having the yarn just free flowing into my stitches like this, it's too loose and there's not enough tension in the yarn. So what I do is hold the yarn between my pinky finger and my ring finger on my left hand. And that way when I squeeze my fingers together, it can create some tension between this yarn instead of it just being completely loose. So I have my palm up and coming from the top, I'm inserting the yarn between those two fingers like this. Then I rotate my hand and I pick up this yarn with my pointer finger. And that helps place the yarn in an easier spot to grab with my hook. So I have again, my ring finger and pinky finger are squeezing that yarn and I put my pointer finger under that yarn and grab it. Then with my thumb and my ring finger, I'm gonna be grabbing where the stitches are working. So now you see that my pointer finger pulling this yarn up creates this V shape and it makes it a lot easier for my hook to work through the yarn. And there's a lot of other ways to hold your yarn too. For example, if you have a hard time squeezing your pinky and ring finger, I've also seen people put it between these fingers. I've seen people wrap it around their pinky like that. So kind of play around with it. And if this doesn't feel natural to you, you can stick it between a different finger. A chain is essentially the foundation for your stitches. So once we create our row of chains, we'll be able to work whatever stitch, like for example, a single crochet into that foundation row of chains. Now to make a chain, I have my middle finger and my thumb pinching the knot of that slip knot. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my hook, and this is called yarning over. I'm taking my hook, placing it over my working yarn. I'm wrapping my hook, grabbing some yarn, and I'm pulling that through the loop. And I'm pushing my hook and sliding that loop back down. And that's one chain. Again, I'm taking my hook, I'm placing it over my working yarn, and under, grabbing a loop, pulling through the loop, and then pushing my hook back up. And then as you work, you can slide these fingers up instead of leaving them down here the whole time. Pinching it kind of helps you have a more secure stitch. Again, I'm taking my hook over the yarn to the left and under, pulling through the loop, and pushing back up. Here's a more up close view of what those stitches look like. It will start to create little V's. And again, while you're working, you wanna make sure that this finger is pulling this yarn tightly, kind of like a tight guitar string would be. You can kind of almost pluck it. Instead of, if this is really loose and droopy, it's really hard to grab this yarn. So keep playing around with the tension, making sure it's relatively tight. I'm pinching my middle finger and thumb close to that stitch taking my hook, bringing it over that working yarn to the left and under. That hook is gonna loop around and pull that yarn through the loop that was on my hook. And then I'm going to push it back up so that the loop is kind of around the roundest part of the hook. So I've done a few chains here and something you need to know while you're crocheting is how to count stitches and chains. So to count these chains, these V's, each V is considered one chain. So you can see here there's one V, two V's, three V's, four, and so on. So I could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And this loop does not count as a chain. So my last one would be nine. So this is what nine chains looks like. I'm going to chain up until I have 15 chains so that we have enough of a foundation to work single crochets into. So that was nine. This would be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I have now completed 15 chains. Again, this is my foundation row, and now I'm gonna show you how to work single crochets into this row. Before we learn a single crochet, we have to learn how to turn. And a row of crochets is not just a 2D straight line where we can kind of keep going back and forth, back and forth. It has a little thickness to it, so think of it as a long rectangle. 
We created a long rectangle working left to right, and now in order to continue the next row, we have to add some height in order to keep going. We can't just keep building on the same level. So to create that height, that's called a turning chain. So we created our row of chains. We're gonna chain one more to create height and then begin working the single crochets. So now that I have my 15 chains, I need to add one more chain to turn. So before I do that, just so we can see clearly where we're working our stitches into, I'm going to mark this last stitch, my 15th stitch with a stitch marker. So to do that, I'm just taking the open stitch marker, finding the last stitch before this loop, and I'm going to insert my stitch marker into the top of that V. If for some reason you're not seeing the Vs, your chain might be facing the wrong way. So if you flip it upside down, you'll see these little bumps that go across the back. Make sure that the Vs are facing up like this. Now I'm inserting my hook back into that loop, pulling tightly, and I'm gonna do one more chain. So for a single crochet, we're gonna be working into this stitch with the stitch marker, skipping this chain as the turning chain. I'll show you down here so you can see it better, but there's the bottom part of the V and the top part of the V. I'm going to be inserting my hook in the middle and through the top, just so that I have that one loop on my hook and I'm not grabbing the bump from the back or the bottom part of the V, I'm just grabbing the top part. So back to where that marked stitch is. I'm inserting my hook just through the top part of that V. Now I'm going to take my hook, yarn over. I'm taking my hook to the left and underneath that yarn and pulling up a loop. So that motion was very similar to the same motion we learned for the chain. Now I have two loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over again, taking my hook up to the left and under that yarn and pulling through two loops. Now I have one loop left on my hook and I just completed one single crochet. I'm gonna remove this because we don't really need it anymore. So now you can see this stitch was worked into this V or chain. So we need to work into the next V. Again, step one is inserting the tip of my hook into the chain. So I'm skipping the one I just worked into, only going through the top loop of that V, grabbing my yarn underneath, pulling through that chain. I now have two loops on my hook. Again, pinching with my middle finger and thumb. I'm yarning over again and pulling through two. A lot of times beginners will have a hard time understanding where to keep inserting their hook. So one way to tell is just by removing your hook and looking at what you've done so far. So here you can see each of the single crochets I'm doing is creating a V up top that should correlate with the V down below. Another way you can tell is by taking your stitch and kind of pulling it. And, and there you can see that it's kind of tugging on this part of the chain. So the next chain would be here, not this one. So continuing, I'm inserting my hook into the top part of the V, yarning over for two loops on my hook, yarning over and pulling through two. So there you can see that just worked into here. So we're skipping, working into the next one, yarning over, two loops on my hook, yarning over, and pulling through two. And as I'm doing that, I am turning my hook a little bit. So for example, I insert my hook. I'm leaving the hook facing up here so that when I pull this yarn, I kind of grab it. But as I pull it through, I'm kind of rotating it to the side so that it slips through that chain nicely and doesn't get stuck. And then again here, it's facing up. I yarn over and I'm kind of tilting it down to pull through those chains and then back up again. Another tip is as I'm inserting my hook, if I don't use my pointer finger, the loop that's on your hook can almost come off as you're doing this. So something that I do to help is as my loop is down here, I hold it with my pointer finger so that as I'm inserting my hook, this loop doesn't get in the way of my stitch. And then I kind of let go to finish. Again, holding my pointer finger on that loop 
inserting my hook, yarning over, and pulling through two. And here you can see how that's building. I'm going to continue that all the way down my row. And I'm working all the way up until that very last V that's right next to the knot from our slip knot. So to count our stitches, I'm counting the V's again, not including this loop since we're still working with that. This would be one V, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we don't get confused where our last stitch is as we turn and continue working. That 15th stitch I just counted, I'm going to mark with a stitch marker. So for the chain, we were working through this top loop down here of the V, but for single crochets, since the V is kind of facing upward now, we are inserting our hook through both loops of the V. So as I mark this stitch, I'm going through the bottom loop of the V and the top loop of the V. And it should kind of look like this from the side, just going straight back, securing my stitch marker. I'm also gonna mark my last stitch over here so that when I chain and turn, I know where to start my first single crochet. Same thing, I'm grabbing both loops of that V, the bottom one and the top one. And it should look like this. And essentially we're repeating that chain one and 15 single crochets all the way until we have our desired height. The only time you're doing chains is gonna be for the foundation row. After that, you can work single crochets into single crochets. So repeating again, I did 15 single crochets. As a turning chain, I'm going to add one chain. So remember I'm pinching that yarn, yarning over, and just pulling up one loop. Now I'm gonna turn my work to continue working right to left. And now to start my first single crochet of my second row, you wanna be careful not to work into that chain you just made. That's why we marked this stitch down here so that we know skip the chain, that's just a turning chain, but do work into this first stitch. Single crochet, I'm inserting my hook, Kind of got to push the stitch marker out of the way. Inserting my hook through both parts of the V, I'm yarning over, pulling up a loop for two loops on my hook, yarning over and pulling through two. Now, the V that was just created here, I'm going to mark as my first single crochet. And I'm also going to remove the one that I just worked into because we don't need that anymore. I'm continuing working through both loops of the V, single crochets all the way down. A little tip about tension. This working yarn here is pulled pretty tightly, but you wanna make sure after you insert your hook and pull this loop up, you wanna make sure you're kind of giving it a little leeway and not keeping it too tight here. Pull up a little bit so that your hook can kind of lay flat with that row and it's not pulled down here super tight at an angle. Do you see the difference? And then this will help you pull your hook through a lot easier when we go to do this loop it just glides right through. Again, I'm inserting my hook, pulling up my loop so that this first loop on the hook isn't too tight, and then yarn over and pull through easily those two loops.
So now that stitch marker is going to help us out to know where to work our last stitch into. And that V that I just created at the top is my last stitch, so I'm going to mark that to help myself on the next row. And we just did two rows of single crochet. I'm going to continue that process for three more rows just to work it up a little more and show you how to count rows. The pattern is, after stitching 15 single crochets, I'm chaining one, turning my work, which is just flipping it, and then continuing 15 stitches. Chaining one, turning my work, and so on. Okay, I did three more rows, so now I have a total of one row of chains and five rows of single crochet. So to count rows, we skip our chains, and this is one, two, three, four, and five. And you can kind of see from the side too, if I hold it like this, that it kind of goes, this is a little lower, raised, lowered, raised, and lowered. So one, two, three, four, five. So let's say this is how many rows I wanted and I want to end my work and tie it off. We finished our last stitch here and we have one loop on our hook and this working yarn. Now to tie it off, before we cut anything, after that last stitch, I'm going to make one chain. So I'm taking my hook over to the left and under, grabbing and pulling a loop. Now I'm setting my work down, taking that working yarn, and leaving a tail that's roughly the length of our hook. Now since we made a chain here, if we pull this working yarn through, it will just create a knot. So I'm taking that hook and just pulling the working yarn through, grabbing it, and pulling it tight. And that is how you tie off your work. You will be left with these loose tails. And something that might be logical is like maybe taking a pair of scissors and just cutting right up at that knot. But if this is something you're using or wearing or whatever you're making, as this knot kind of gets moved around, if the tail is really short, it could get pulled through and then start to unravel. So we're gonna leave these tails relatively long and just sew them back into our stitches so that it looks kind of seamless. So I'll start with the yarn that I had just cut and I'm taking my needle, inserting my yarn through, the eye of the needle, and just pulling it a little bit so that there's somewhat of a tail there. And you can kind of weave them in however you want, but whatever you do, you want to go forward and back a little bit instead of just pulling it through one direction, because it'll make it a little bit more secure. So I'm going to insert it through this V here, I'm going to go down through this chain, Hiding it through these two loops. And there's not really a wrong way to do this. You just want to make sure that you're working into the stitches and mimicking the direction that the yarn's already going so that it doesn't look too obvious. So here you can kind of see how it just disappears as I'm working with my stitches. And I'm going to loop back through the other way so that it's more secure.
And sometimes it's kind of hard to pull this thicker eye through your stitches. So if you have a problem with that, I just kind of twist it and it will like shimmy it through. And you don't need to use up all this tail and like keep stitching and stitching until you have nothing left. I kind of just do like that amount and then I'll cut it off flush with my work. And kind of give your work a little tug. And you can't even see where that end was. It just looks like the other side did. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this tail. If that was kind of confusing for you, you could also do it this way. It's kind of easy to see with these twisty chains at the bottom. So I'm just kind of going loop, 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 loop through each of these bumps on the chain. It doesn't really camouflage it as well as the other way we did, but it's a little bit easier if you are getting confused. And then clip it flush to your work and just give it a little tug and we're done. So here's what my sample looks like of five rows of single crochet. Also feel free to rewatch some clips if you're really struggling with chains or um, slip knots. Keep replaying it, keep trying. The best way to improve is just repetition and practice. And it's not something that's going to feel natural at first, it's going to feel awkward. And something that helped me was equating it to like a baby deer learning how to walk. They can't really stand upright and they're kind of stumbling and fumbling. And it's going to kind of feel like that because you're learning a new skill and it's not, this is not a natural thing to just know how to do unless you have experience. So be patient with yourself. But I hope this was helpful. This is going to be a series with several parts. If you've begun to master what I've taught in this video and you want to move past single crochets, subscribe and stay tuned for part two. I love you all and I'll see you in my next video.